Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all having a great day and that you're all doing well. Side note, I have a, uh, not even a bit of a headache, I do have a headache and my nose is stuff, so I do apologize in advance if I sound a little down or dreary. It's because I'm not feeling too well, uh, but the news has to come out there. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Twitter CEO, his name is Jack Dorsey, has all but confirmed that Bitcoin's Lightning Network will feature in the payment wallet and app built by his other company known as Square. Speaking on the Stefan Levera podcast yesterday, Dorsey joined Lightning Lab CEO, her name is Elizabeth Stark, in discussing Lightning's ideals and his personal belief in the protocol. Asked whether this would lead to the integration with, with Square's Cash App, the answer that came was surprisingly candid. There he is right there, he said. We would love to make Bitcoin as fast and efficient and transactional as possible. And that includes looking at our seller base and register, he said, end quote. It's not an if, it's more of a when. How do we make sure that we're getting the speed that we need and the efficiency? The comment comes just days after Dorsey personally advocated for Bitcoin on Twitter while accepting an invitation to participate in the Lightning Network's Torch transaction relay. The initiative, which began last month, involves a relay transaction sent between network users, raising awareness and testing its technical ability. The podcast interview itself was also arranged on the back of the Torch activities. Um, and then we also had news a couple of days ago where, so this is all happening uh, relatively fast, uh, where for some reason, uh, Jack Dorsey decided to come out in public and state that, not only does he like uh, cryptocurrencies, but he actually only likes Bitcoin. He's betting exclusively on Bitcoin. And then we had uh, people talking about if he was going to uh, get the Lightning Torch, um, the Lightning Network Torch on Twitter. And then he said, yeah, he did it. And then people were asking, are you planning on integrating the Lightning Network into uh, Twitter as well to be able to like send micro payments and to like be able to tip people. He said that's a very good idea. Um, he's probably going to intimate, intimate that, implement that. And now we have an indication that for his other app known as Square, the Cash app, uh, that at some point we're also going to get Lightning Network on there as well. Um, maybe it's just the timing. Maybe I don't know why I. Uh, whatever. Uh, I keep saying things and then they end up happening in real life. So I'm just going to say that Bitcoin is going to hit 35,000 in the next two months because every single time that I mention something, things keep popping up. I was just saying that we needed a celebrity or, or someone very popular a week ago to kind of uh, mention Bitcoin and kind of get the word out there. And lo and behold, uh, we have the head of, uh, what is it, Twitter and Square, all this other stuff to talk about the. Um, where they would like Bitcoin to go, how much they're betting on Bitcoin, how they only own Bitcoin. It's very good for the cryptocurrency space, um, even if nothing more than just for Bitcoin's price. But um, hopefully we get this in 2019. I see no reason why they wouldn't at least try to roll it out to like a small number of people. This is what we typically see and we have seen before in the past is that when something is going to be implemented, we get, you know, like a couple, like 1500 users around the world to end up a uh, they get to use it and or test it. So hopefully we end up having this because that would be kind of cool to have this on, on Lightning Network on Twitter. And also, I don't use Square myself, but uh, it wouldn't hurt. Let's move on. Going to breeze over these two. Uh, apparently, people kept on asking uh, on Bittrex uh, for Bittrex to add Grin, the cryptocurrency. And apparently they did it. It says after multiple attempts, they were... I guess I can only imagine bombarded when people really want something to happen with a cryptocurrency. Uh, they really make it happen. And one of the greatest or easiest things that I think that uh, people in the cryptocurrency space can do is always just like message someone, send someone an email, say, hey, we want this to happen. We would like this thing to be on our or your platform. I use your platform. Can you please implement this? Because I would like to buy, sell or trade. Uh, typically, Every other company in the world except for Coinbase will usually oblige because they're like, okay, we see that there's an op money opportunity to be made here. Uh, Coinbase doesn't do it. Uh, people for, like the last like three weeks have been asking me why I'm bashing Coinbase is because they're horrible. I I There's no other way for me to kind of say this. Like they've been out. Coinbase has been out since like I think 2012 or 2013. I think they, they boasted about it before in some other article that they had gotten into Bitcoin when it was around a dollar. And I think they opened up Coinbase by the time it was $10. They keep adding coins and no one really wants. Like, can you imagine a world or a situation where people are emailing Coinbase and they're like, hey, can you add Grin and Beam? And, and then Coinbase is like, 
yeah, we'll do that. We'll do it in a couple of days like every other exchange has been doing it. This is why I keep bashing Coinbase because they're absolutely horrible. It's the same exact thing with the Gemini twins. Like their exchanges are a complete trash at this point. We have things like Binance. We have things like Bittrex. We even, I mean, anyway, the point is uh, good job on them for adding another coin that just came out that people in the community wanted. And yeah, next story. Same exact thing with Qcoin. One of uh, the Singapore-based crypto exchanges known as Qcoin has gone ahead to support the purchase of uh, some significant coins in the market. This is with a direct use of credit and or debit cards. It has the list, is the actual tweet for it right here. According to the announcement that was made by the company, users are able to easily purchase Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, and Bitcoin through the new partnership they have gotten into with the Simplex company. The Simplex company has been established as a leading payment process platform that has proven results. Not forgetting the Binance platform also went ahead to announce a similar arrangement they have gotten into. Uh, so one, uh, this seems to be the new it thing. And it's so I don't understand why people don't like maybe it's just me. I don't I don't get why people don't try to do things first. It's like everyone is kind of sitting in, in, in a room like a dark room doing nothing. And they wait for another company to announce that they have done something before they actually end up doing something. Uh, one, it's great that they've added uh, debit and credit card purchases for Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, and Bitcoin. That's absolutely wonderful. But this is like the fifth company that's come out after Binance announced that they were going to have uh, like uh, the, the, the fiat on ramp and then, the, you know, the whole uh, buying with card and stuff like that. I don't get why people take their time to release information like this. I still feel like crypto could be so much further ahead if every company and every country didn't wait for an, someone else to kind of step into the ring first. It, it seems a bit lazy to me. I don't know why people just don't take the initial initiative to kind of step forward. Uh, but yeah, that's wonderful. I don't use Qcoin myself, but um, I do like, I mean, 2018 and 2019 so far, we're, we're like, what is it, six weeks into the year? absolutely wonderful so far like we haven't had any bad news that i can think of except for like maybe like delays or etf what have you so and so and so but the amount of on ramps and off ramps that we're getting are absolutely amazing uh the amount of companies who are i guess after binance finally realizing that you know adding cards as an option may be a good idea maybe people want to buy with debit and credit cards that's completely new right because for some reason a lot of these places who were allowing like for fiat transfers and stuff like that they had like um like bank transfers and like like you could send in checks to like one or two of the places and i'm like you run a cryptocurrency company and you didn't think like from the moment you opened i understand regulations and stuff like that but when you when you're opening maybe go to a regulator and be like hey we're, we we want to offer cards because because people use cards can can we accept cards and then you kind of get it from the get-go uh wonderful to hear that they added this let us uh move on i'm i'm sorry it's just so many situations like this with cryptocurrency exchanges the same as i think with coinbase like i don't know like what 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 is everyone waiting for like if you wait too long it like your news is no longer significant like you miss out on the market movements like you can move the market yourself if you are one of the first people out there like if people are thinking like we've mentioned the word binance about eight nine ten times because binance did it first so like how many more people did binance have on their platform or will they continue to have on their platform because whenever there's an article written like this they're like oh yeah this place added you know uh debit and credit cards but that place had it first and then you're like well i've heard about that place a lot more than you know this new one i don't really i don't use them my friends use the other exchange it's, you get what i'm saying like everyone keeps waiting for everything i i i think a lot of these movements are meant to be uh, strategic but they're not because they don't ever really help these companies so many of these companies and cryptocurrency exchanges and other and other coin projects they're either disappearing or they're losing money or they're losing funding or they don't have enough or mismanagement of funds because they keep waiting to give out relevant information that they should have just given up before everybody else don't get it uh like i said maybe it's just me maybe it's because i don't own a cryptocurrency company maybe i'm just completely unaware of uh what it takes to run a cryptocurrency company but yeah, uh, let's move on. Next up, remittance firms in the United Arab Emirates Exchange and UniMoney have gone live with blockchain payments using Ripple technology. Fenabler? Is that an I or an L? Fen Fenabler. 
which owns the two brands, announced on Sunday that real-time cross-border remittances using RippleNet are now live, starting with payment for its international customers to Thailand. Other destination countries are expected to be added going forward. The service was launched in partnership with Thailand's Siam Commercial Bank, the firm said. And blockchain, quick, fast remittance provide, frictionless, fast, awesome, amazing. So uh, nice to hear that uh, another Ripple partner has gone live with RippleNet. That's absolutely wonderful. Uh, we get this news so often at this point, it's kind of just like a, a breeze over news story because they keep having more partners and they keep getting uh, more people to use their technology, which I'm is absolutely wonderful. Uh, it's, yeah, just let's move on. A lot of, a lot of breeze over stories today. <laughs> uh, next up. New York-based research company known as Fundstrat Global Advisors has released its 2019 crypto outlook. They did this on Friday. The analysis describes incremental improvements that will purportedly support higher prices for cryptocurrencies. Tom Lee, who is Fundstrat's co-founder and pro-crypto Wall Street analyst. Why'd they have to put that in there? Pro-crypto. Anyway, uh, commented on the study in his Twitter he posted an introduction to the study and infographics that trace key market tendencies from 2017 until right now. He said, we see nine incremental improvements in the landscape that ultimately support higher prices. The preview of the introduction chapter provides a brief assessment of 2018, which, according to Funstrat, has brought a lot of disappointment. The analysts state that negative headwinds such as initial coin offerings post hangover adverse regulatory developments and excessive exuberance have reversed some of crypto's achievements, including the launch of the Lightning Network and wallet growth. As a result, the year was more like a morning after sobering. It was a very, very long year. However, in 2019, the situation will slowly start to change. Funstrap believes it is still too early to talk about mass adoption, but notes that cryptocurrency prices will likely see a recovery. Oh, uh, the typically... What we had in 2018 is that no one really agreed on where the prices of cryptocurrencies were going to go. In 2019, I think they're all slowly converging to kind of one general idea that prices are going to recover. Uh, but the only thing that really differs is, is the, uh, it kind of comes down to the prices that everyone is saying that things will actually go to. The, the most ridiculous ones that we've seen on both ends is Bitcoin by the end of this year, the end of this year, um, hitting between six to seven thousand dollars, and that being the complete peak. Somewhere in the middle, we see stuff around like forty-five, fifty-five thousand, and the other people talking about that something that's going to start in this year, and then uh, not finish its runoff, but like still continue its continuation in two thousand nine twenty, is going to be a Bitcoin price of three hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars. Not exactly too sure how that's going to work out. There was something that I obviously don't have in this video. Or rather, you wouldn't know that I obviously don't have it. Uh, where John McAfee was uh, being spoken to and people were asking him, uh, does he think that Bitcoin is still going to hit a million dollars by the end of next year? He still says yes. I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, but I would not complain if Bitcoin ends up hitting. If, if Bitcoin hits a million dollars... <laughs> by the end of next year do you know how high the other altcoins would be like do you understand like the actual prices we would have legitimately like forty five fifty thousand dollar uh ethereum like litecoin would be an easy three four five thousand i don't know anyway uh everyone thinks that the market is going to recover i'm 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 literally at the point right now where uh, it's not that I don't care, but I feel like everything that's said to me by these analysts, I like not even with a grain of salt. Like I knock the grain of salt off the table because it's just kind of like, just do it already. Everyone keeps saying the market's going to move and we're still within that time frame. We still, this month or next month, uh, let us see if this is actually going to happen. Uh, so for those who have never heard of the game called Flappy Bird... <laughs> It came out like a couple of years ago. It's actually quite an interesting story for those who don't know it. I'll tell you because why not live a little. Um, it's an app that this guy made. Very relatively simple app. You kind of tap on the screen and 
a little bird like flaps and he, he, had, he keeps like knocking into barriers and you have to kind of like flap at a certain time period to be able to get him through it. The guy who actually made the app is, re is a really funny story. He created the app. He threw the thing online. Um, he wasn't really paying attention to what was going on with it. And apparently there were so many downloads of it like every single day that after a week, like uh, news and camera crews actually found where he lived knocked on his door and they were like, what do you, oh my gosh, like you're super famous now. Like, how did you make this game? And he's like, what are you talking about? He had no idea what was actually even going on. And apparently he was making like over $50,000 a day from the amount of downloads that people were actually getting for the game. Uh, I think he eventually tried to take the game down because he said the, the pressure was too much on his life. I would love to make $50,000 in a day. That would not be too much pressure on my life. And anyway, the point is, um, it's been at least four or five years since that happened. Uh, people have revived the game and put it back on the EOS blockchain. I tr I'll be completely honest. I heard this. I was like, well, that's kind of cool because it says some way. Oh, yeah. That was really weird. January 2014. I guess it has. Yeah. I wasn't even looking at that. That's extremely weird. Uh, so the point is, is that they put it on EOS and I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try this game out. Uh, Part of and I and I understand I get, um, things take time. The way that the cryptocurrency space is right now, it will be a lot better in ten years. The way that uh, DApps and apps and maps and all these other things are are made on cryptocurrencies are going to improve as well. Part of the reason why I still haven't, rather, why I think that cryptocurrency games have not found any type of mainstream appeal. It even says over, this is for like, I think articles from like a day ago or something it says, so far the last seven days have only brought 57 users and they've been about 154 transactions. And I was like, why, why, why so few when you actually, first of all, it's difficult to even find the game. Like there's not an, an easy way to find it. Maybe if you go on like one of those like EOS DAP websites or something like that, it was a, about a nine website click to be able to find this. Like the, 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 there's not even a link for it to get into it inside here. When you finally get to the game, you have to like download a wallet to be able to play the game. And it's it's just it's just very it's like clunky. There's not going to be a world anytime soon. You know how easy it is, like when you pick up your phone and you're like, Oh, I want to download this app and you download it and then you can use it like automatically. Can you imagine if everything that you had to do was built on a different blockchain and you had to keep downloading different wallets to be able to use these things, especially when the games are supposed to be free. Like Flappy Bird was supposed to be a free game. I understand the point of the EOS wallet because I think you can like win money from it. However, uh, I think the only EOS game that I've played that was actually pretty cool. This was sometime last summer. It was like the one like with the knight and he had like a knife or something like that. And he was like, smacking people into lava it was pretty cool like it, it was it, it was to show you how many transactions you were actually like i think every movement was a transaction like every hit every jump every slash was a transaction in the eos network and by the end of the level it would show you you had 480 so and so and so i don't know how they're going to uh manage to push these things out a, ma a major problem that we're having in the cryptocurrency space right now is that people keep creating uh or recreating or reviving uh games and applications but they don't get them out there. Like there's no, everyone's so focused on making a, like a killer dap or a killer game that everyone's going to love, but there never seems to be any money actually put into advertising these things so that other people end up knowing about them. If, if that makes a lot of sense, like a lot of the games that you've probably heard of have even just been word of mouth. A lot of the games that I've heard of have been word of news story and they kind of don't like, I don't know. Maybe it's because they just don't have the money to kind of do it. But I feel like there's definitely a way, like if they, why isn't there an initiative by the creators of some of these platforms who create their own websites and then promote them on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook and on Snapchat and all these other places to tell people to use this one website to find out all the new apps and all the new games. And it kind of like causes people to flow to these websites. Like if you, if you love EOS, uh, the creators or the, even like the block producers of EOS should have like a dedicated website where they tell people to use these things, like where to upload them. And because it, it feels like right now, that, like there's nothing like streamlined, like there's nothing. Everyone is so concerned with, with creating things and throwing them into the wind, not realizing that no one has anything to catch the thing that's flying in the wind. Like you understand what I'm saying? Maybe I'm just rambling on because there are so many things and it's, it's 
crypto is it's 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 causing my headache to uh to pulse there, there, there's so many things that are nonsensical in the cryptocurrency space i feel like we have so many brilliant minds the people who create these games and these projects and these blockchains and these distributed ledgers and these tangles but they have no idea how to market anything like there's they they don't really get like um like even for certain wallets and stuff like that, like especially the wallets that we had years ago, I'm glad that they hired designers. We had wallets that were so ugly and so clunky and like you couldn't use them. Like I don't even mean like 2011 Bitcoin. I mean like 2014, 15, 16. Like they're, they're, they're more concerned with like, it's the same exact reason why, why mining is relatively difficult because no one can, this is why proof of stake is so appealing to a lot of people because you just have to have the coin and you kind of throw it into the network or throw it into a computer. You click like stake. And then it does it for you. Like when you ha have you ever tried mining before? Have you ever actually like you? If you look at tutorials for it, like people are like, oh, okay, it's this is relatively simple. It's like a 17 minute video, and you have to add in code, you have to delete code, you have to go and download other things that you have to put it. Like it's a it's a good 15 to 25 minute process depending on which one that you're actually trying to do. And then you still have to do other. It's it's, it's just a very I, I assume as time goes on, I, I did not, well, I'm, I'm surprising myself. I didn't mean to spend this much time talking about EOS and Flappy Bird, but I assume as time goes on, more things will become streamlined. I have staked tokens before. It's incredibly easy. Um, I remember the internet in the late 90s and early 2000s. So I know that as time goes on, these things will become more streamlined, but I feel like just investing like a couple of bucks on the side to advertise or kind of actually get these things out there because can you imagine a situation first of all flappy bird I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people who played it remember it imagine a situation where you had proper advertising or you found a proper way to get it out there like on like a dedicated website that you kind of streamline people to and they found out that not only could they replay this game but that they could win money from it a cryptocurrency, like something that, that rings in everyone's head because everyone knows what a cryptocurrency is, at least at this point. Um, you get what I'm saying? Like there's so many things in, in crypto that are or could be really amazing things, but they just end up falling apart. Like I, I'm going to assume within about two weeks, there's probably going to be three users playing this game because the advertising, like what was the other game that we had? uh is it also on eos or is it, is it ethereum no i think it's on eos the that like night game with all the cards and the magical wizards and the elves and the druids and the so and so and you open up a chest and you do this i think it's, i think it's ethereum it's 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 one of the major platforms um beautiful game like it looks absolutely incredible and like you want to like desperately play it but like no one else is really playing it and they're talking about having tournaments and i'm like you probably maybe have like 38 people around the world playing this like they there's no this okay long story short hyper long story short I, this is why i'm kind of excited for the uh the people from blizzard world of warcraft whatever you want to call them who are building that game on top of the eos blockchain because i'm hoping that they get it and that they make a great game and that they figure out ways to advertise it i can only assume uh that they should have at least a couple six figures high six figures to be able to advertise this because it could be a major game but i am still fearful that they're going to create this wonderful fantasy land and no one's going to know about it because they never know how to advertise properly um right let's move on uh i guess to kind of smash things together and finish this off uh, people have been doing research and as I'm sure they really have because of how the world is slowly falling into the mud. Um, it appears that Venezuela's Bitcoin trading volume has actually beat India and Canada put together, which is actually completely insane. This is because of what we've been seeing inside of Venezuela as far as everything that's happening there. I to lightly touch on it. People are fleeing the country. I think like 600,000 have already done so within the last like two or three months. Uh, they're like barricades to like stop people from actually leaving the country. Uh, the money is falling apart. Nobody wants to stay there. And the people who are still there are transacting through uh, local Bitcoin or they're using Dash or like they're trying to figure out a way to like get around the monetary constraints. Or uh, there was something I was watching a couple days ago and they said that when people get their paycheck, it's like, a box full of paper money like not joking 
and these people then run to the person who owns their flat to like pay them their rent like immediately and they go run to buy as many groceries as possible because there are like signs and like tickers everywhere that tell them that the money that they're holding is like losing value like per the minute so people do these things rapidly to try and make sure how to get all their bills paid and it's just kind of like a really weird situation but on top of this as well um a lot of people i'm not exactly sure how many but a lot of people within the country have been uh what's it called using bitcoin using local bitcoin but apparently uh the country of venezuela knows this and they announced last week that they were going to start um putting like restrictions on cryptocurrency exchanges cryptocurrency this cryptocurrency that but apparently they're trying to figure out or rather i assume they have it says it imposes fees and limits on actual local bitcoin usage i'm i can only imagine the things that they're actually doing that just hasn't made the news uh just a very weird situation i uh, stupidly thought two or three years ago when we were hearing about stuff in venezuela that they wouldn't have would have gotten it together nope that's not going to happen uh it appears that things are not going too well they're probably not going to go too well um yeah this is happening all over the world right now as well it's very weird uh because you may hear about it for a couple of seconds on the news but a lot of people don't really get how bad that things are getting uh monetary policies are completely falling apart we have a lot of analysts uh who are predicting that this year is going to be the start of like a new uh great recession for the stock market and it's going to wane on until the 2020s detrimental 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 uh this is why i still hold out a huge amount of hope for cryptocurrencies hopefully they can come to save the day but at, we're gonna have uh that moment that we've been waiting for for quite a long amount of time where we kept on saying what's going to happen to crypto during a stock market crash we still do not know uh but i think we're leading up to it very 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 soon Pri oh I'm tired of this thing prices are not too bad uh, I read an article talking about that Tron was going down after the airdrop. It's to be expected. Uh, Litecoin was doing relatively well like a day or two ago. I'm not exactly sure what happened. I guess maybe the the train ran out of uh, steam or smoke or whatever you kind of want to say. Nothing's doing like too, too bad right now. Binance Coin has been on like a constant run up the past like week. So it's okay to have a bit of a pullback. Um, but yeah, I think that is definitely going to do it for this video. I uh, hope I didn't sound too down or too dreary. It just, I I woke up. I don't know. I, I woke up incorrectly. I think I ate breakfast too fast. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Maybe I need to have more water. Um, but yeah, hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening. Wherever you are, wherever you might be, I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. I do appreciate all of your support. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Vlad the Impaler, Gil Boa Snake, Rai Rai, Brady Nields, L. Doug, Arthur Yaku, Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Nick Mangialavori, Travis Haynes, Gordon Nickick, Yasha Harari, Anthony Charles, and Nick Kanaya. I hope I said that correctly. Thank you all very much for your generosity. I do appreciate it. And yeah, I will talk to you all soon. See you.